Say hi guys. Hi. <laughs> what did we get today, Colt? What did we get? Say the words. Peaches. Peaches. And what are these? Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. If you're new here, my name is Kirsty, and I think as you can see, we got some tomatoes today. All right, so if you watched our previous video, um, we went down to Denio's Farmer's Market in Roseville, California, and we met the nicest guy. He was trying to push out the last of his stock since it was a Sunday, and um, we got a hundred and about I mean, we haven't weighed them yet, but we got about 125 pounds of tomatoes alone for $40, okay? And then we got, um, we got 28 pounds of peaches for $20, and we also got almost bad figs, but we got a whole case of those for $20 also. But right now, we are going to be doing the tomatoes, and what we are going to do is we are, this, hopefully, this will be... I ho I'm hoping that we'll get at least 50 quarts of tomato sauce from this, um, and that will be the entire year's worth of tomato sauce for us because we'll eat spaghetti or chili or <laughs> we'll eat spaghetti or chili or other dishes with tomato that are tomato based about once a week. So it should last us until next year. All right, so let's get started. All right, guys. So I'm gonna get started with rinsing off the tomatoes, okay? We're gonna get them rinsed off and cut into halves and put in our big stock pot and get them cooking. Um, we leave the skins on our tomatoes, okay? It adds extra vitamins, fiber, it's, they're good for you. And at, um, before we make our sauce, we puree it up so you can't even tell if the skins are in there. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, so some of these tomatoes have like dried wrinkled edges okay that is fine that will cook down now if you have a tomato that has mold on it you cannot cut the mold off because the mold will go through the whole tomato um, and it's no good so pull those out of there and uh, let's get to cooking all right so we are using such a large pot I have room to do two boxes of tomatoes so I'm going to get this other half half in here and get them cooking. All right guys, so very important, make sure you're stirring and you really get to the bottom of that pot and stir those tomatoes up. You don't want them to burn, okay? And when you're cooking in a really giant pot, it's really easy to forget about those tomatoes on the bottom. Okay, you guys, so here is our super easy trick to remove the extra water from your sauce without having to boil it down forever, okay? So what you do is you take a really, really fine mesh strainer and you push it down into the top of your sauce and it starts collecting the tomato juice in the strainer without getting any of the pulp or the good stuff and you can take out a significant amounts of tomato juice and it will save your power bill and it will save your time immensely. Okay, you guys, we have moved our first batch of tomato sauce, as much of it as we could, into my 17 quart roasting pan and we are going to continue to pull water out of it while it cook and keep it hot so that we can get it canning as soon as possible. All right, you guys. Oh, it is a hot day in this house. We are, we are, this is our first batch of 50 pounds of tomatoes. Our second batch of 50 pound tomatoes is on the stove right now. And this is our last 25 pounds of tomatoes that we bought this morning. Okay, so as you can see, our tomato sauce is nice and thick and there's no water pooling at the top of it. When you don't have any more water on the top, that's when you know that your sauce is thick enough, okay? All right, so we are going to be water bath canning 
today and we are actually doing the canning outside on a propane burner because it's just already so hot in here we did not think we needed to add a boiling pot of water on top of all everything else. Okay, so some of the things that I do when I have large bath canning like this is I keep, so I keep my product hot, right? We have to keep the product warm and the jars warm while the canner's going, okay? I know that it is not an approved method and I'm not telling you to do this, but what I do is I keep my jars warm by keeping them in a 200 degree oven and it works perfect for us, okay? So we have a hot product sitting in our roasting pan and then I have hot jars and I have the canner going outside. All right, so let's get these filled. We are going to fill our jars up to a half an inch headspace, okay? So like I've said in previous videos, um, if you have a canning funnel, there is a line on the inside of your canning funnel that you will bring it up to. That is a half an inch headspace. If you do not have a canning funnel, then you're going to go up to this ring right here, which is the first ring up, that's a half an inch. Put a little bit too much in there. We want to have room to still put our one tablespoon of lemon juice. So, um, so they say that tomatoes toe the line between being acidic and alkaline. So you have to make sure that you either put citric acid into your tomatoes or into your tomato sauce or you need to put lemon juice or vinegar lemon juice i think just tastes better um into your tomato sauce i actually tried using citric acid one year and it didn't end up well it like literally burns my mouth and i know they say it's just the same as lemon juice but i have some sort of reaction to using citric acid so i always use lemon juice now Okay, so now for every quart size jar, you are going to need to add one tablespoon of lemon juice. For pint size jars, you'll use a teaspoon and a half. All right, this step is totally optional, but I like to add a teaspoon of salt to each of my jars. It is the only seasoning that I use in my tomato sauce. I don't do like a pasta sauce or a pizza sauce or anything like that because I like to be able to use my tomato sauce for whatever product I'm making at the time. I really am a fan of storing ingredients um, over full meals. We do have full meals and like our chicken soup that we stock and stuff like that but I really am a fan of storing ingredients so that I can make several different things. All right, so you are going to need to make sure that you clean your jar rings really well. So that there's nothing between the lid and the jar that will prevent a good seal. All right, so we are going to get our lids on just fingertip tight. That's where you twist your lid on until you feel resistance and then go a quarter turn farther. All right, you guys, we are going to get these in the water bath canner and for our elevation, we are going to be canning them for 45 minutes. And all right, you guys, we will be back when all of this tomato sauce is done. Thank you so much for watching. Good morning, everybody. Oh my gosh, yesterday was quite a canning day. <laughs> okay, so we got all of our tomato sauce done yesterday, and now we are going to focus on the tomato juice that we took out and obviously saved. We wound up with 11 half gallon jars of tomato juice. I did not make sure that I was um, cleaning my jars and everything yesterday, like wiping the rims and stuff. So now today I gave myself some extra work and I'm going to have to put, so what I'm going to do so that I don't use my stove, cause I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have the canning pot on my stove. I'm going to put as many of these as will fit into my roasting pan and I'm going to just heat them up. I'm going to wash all of my jars and then I am going to heat them up and then we will can them. Now I'm just going to say right now, it is not approved to can tomato juice in half gallon jars. It is not because it's not safe, it's because it's never been tested, 
Okay, you guys, so they say that the only thing that has been approved to can in half gallon jars are is apple juice and grape juice. That's because, and you guys can look this up, that they say people don't can in half gallon jars anymore because they don't have big families. Well, some of us have big families. <laughs> so um, I am going to can in these half gallon jars. I'm not telling you to, but if you would like to, I'm going to show you the process, all right? Okay, so first things first, we are going to get as many of these into our, they actually sealed themselves because the tomato juice was hot yesterday. I just added extra work. I wanted to wash more jars. I am just going to turn my roaster up to high so that it heats up the liquid because we only need it to get about 200 degrees. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just confused myself so bad trying to figure out the lemon juice and the salt for this recipe. I was calculating for all of the tomato juice that I have instead of just the eight half gallons that are in here. <laughs> okay, so you are going to add, um, you are going to add a quarter cup of lemon juice for every half gallon, and you are going to add two teaspoons of salt for every half gallon. And remember to use the non-iodized salt because it can make your end product cloudy. I just, this is canning salt, but you can also use pink Himalayan or sea salt also. So I think that a lot of the time people have issues canning in half gallon jars because they don't actually have a pot that's big enough to do it in. Okay, so what I use is I use a turkey fryer pot. I call it my tamale pot because that's what I make tamales in. But um, it's gigantic. It's obviously big enough to hold a whole to, to fry a whole turkey in, right? So um, that is what I use. And you do have to have your water one to two inches above your jars to safely can them. So even you, you know, even being a rebel canner that I'm being by using the big jars, I I still want to stress that you have to have a big enough pot to fit the water one to two inches above your tomato juice. Okay, now we're gonna get our jars filled. Um, my big turkey fryer pot holds four half gallon jars. So that is what I'm going to be doing right now. I tell you, I feel like my whole house has been Overtaken by tomatoes. Inside, outside, everywhere, tomatoes. But I just, I can't even tell you. I feel so blessed that we found that gentleman yesterday that sold us those cases of tomatoes for only $8. Okay, so I'm going to fill them up to a one inch headspace. So, which means to either the base of your canning funnel or to the bottom of the where the neck starts on your jar, the very bottom of that. Okay, you guys, so as always, we are going to use the hot water from our water bath canner to dip our flour sack towel into. Make sure you don't burn yourself, it's hot. Tanner just woke up. Man, the kids are all still sleeping because we had such a long day yesterday. I woke them up at 5.30 to go to Denio's. So, and then we were up until nine canning last night. Um, so they had a very long day. All right, so I am going to put my lids on fingertip tight. Tanner is starting to grab at stuff, so I have to keep him to the side. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are going to get our jars into the canner and we are going to can them for 25 minutes. I am actually going to leave a link in the description below on a website that has canning times for all different half gallon jar canning recipes, okay? All right, so we will be back in 25 minutes. 
All right, you guys, we have officially finished canning 125 pounds of tomato products. Okay, so we wound up with 28 quarts and one pint of tomato, of super thick, delicious tomato sauce. And we wound up with 11 half gallons and one quart of tomato juice that we just did. All right, we had the best luck with our lids, um, I, which hasn't been the case for the past couple years, I have to say. We have had every, so these two we're still waiting on because they were just pulled out of the canner, but every other lid sealed. Should knock on wood there just to, to make sure that those do. But um, I am very impressed with that. They are all, so these are all Kerr and the, Half gallons are ball, but Kerr, you guys, if you guys know, uh, if you guys don't know, Kerr and Ball and Golden Harvest are all three owned by the same corporation. Okay, I'll pop up the name because I don't remember exactly. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. It is going to be the first of three canning videos to go along with our Denio strip. And um, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We love to interact with you guys. It, it just... It really helps us make these videos so that we know that we're teaching and helping people. And if you guys enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And as always, have a blessed day. Bye.